Victor Sazar here with TheBoxingVoice.com, here with former world champion Kendall Hope. Kendall, it's been a while since we've seen you in the ring. Heard the news. You'll be back next year. Tell us about that fight. What weight? Where is it at? Where is it taking place at? Uh, the fight? I'm fighting Javier Molina. Javier is a Molina. He's a young, hungry guy. Wanting to put his stamp on boxing. Wanting the boxing world to know who he is. Um, you know, I, I've been in his situation before, so I know what's going through his mind. And I know what's going through my mind. It's going to be a good fight. But, you know, I'm back at, I'm fighting at welterweight, 147 pounds. Uh, all my fights in the past, I believe that's been my problem. Losing too much weight, you know. I'm, you know, I'm in a gym, 155 pounds, 153 pounds uh, throughout camp. And I have five, six, seven, eight percent body fat. So I'm learning that I've been losing muscle mass. I haven't been losing weight, I've been losing muscle. And for each of the fights that I've lost in the past, dating back to Timothy Bradley, is I can actually feel when I'm in the, when I'm in the sauna, steam room, once I get below 143, I can actually feel my legs get weaker. A lot of people might say that's an excuse, but I don't feel like it's an excuse. Like the more I've been learning over this past year, after the, the loss, the TKO loss to um, to Peterson, I feel like I, I've I've learned more. Like I didn't haven't had people. Well, I have had people tell me in the past to move up to welterweight, move up to welterweight, and I was just hard headed. And if you go back and look at my the, the last few fights I've lost, they've been at 140 pounds. Peterson, Mobuza, uh, Bradley, Garcia. Those fights are at the 140 limit. The ones after that or in between those were 42, 43, 44. So once I get below 143, 142, that's when I feel like, you know, I'm I'm really starting to hurt myself. Looking back, I can I can say honestly say that now. Brandon Jacobs, Buddy McGirt, they've been telling me over the years, you're not a junior welterweight, you're a welterweight. And me, I've been hard headed and didn't want to listen. Um, so I paid the ultimate price. But now I'm back on the comeback trail. I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. Uh, I'm in the gym. I'm working hard two, three times a day. So I'm back to being that hungry fighter I was coming up just with more experience. So I think it's a good thing right now. Now you feel the time off was needed after your last loss to Peterson because it's going to be almost 10 months since you've been back in the ring. And come January, you know, it'll be almost close to a year. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, time, time off at the... After a defeat like that is uh, is always good because you can regroup mentally, let your body heal physically. But um, you know, it was more emotional damage done to me more than anything uh, with that fight and with with the Garcia fight because those those were fights I really really felt that I could win. And you know, you see in the early rounds I was good, but being that I lost so much weight and so much muscle mass that I know that now that I just couldn't sustain sustain anything that I had worked on and most of my and I lost most of my uh, training camp in, in, uh, in the sauna. Now obviously you're a good boxer but you're more known for that one punch knockout power. You think that power is going to carry you up to 147? Absolutely but you know what I'm getting you know the power is always going to be there and you know I'm back with my trainer terrific and I'm basically you know, I hit hard, but that's not my game. And for the last couple months, I've been reminded of that. That's not my game. I hit hard, yeah, but I'm a boxer. I move. I'm slick. I have more than one attribute. So from now on, I'm going to start to utilize all of my attributes. Now, obviously, with Gary Shaw, I mean, how's that relationship? How comfortable are you with Gary Shaw that you, you know, you're going to end up on an HBO show come later on this year? Um, well, I'm not with Gary Shaw anymore. But when I was with Gary Shaw, I was comfortable with Gary Shaw. I felt like he was making the right moves for Kendall, for me. But I just think that, you know, everyone was so, so, everybody was so focused on my, my, my punch, my knockout power. Oh, he's a knockout punch. If he catches the guy, then he's going to sleep. Yes, but no one really understood that I was killing myself to get down to that weight. And I think that, you know, I'm still here, you know, I'm 32, you know, some say that's old, some say, you know, my best days are behind me, but being in here sparring with these young guys, with some of these veterans, and I'm getting back to doing the things that I've always done that got me to the top, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling great.
So who's handling your career at the current moment? Are you a free agent or what's going on? I don't have a promoter, but my manager is Marcus Coates, and you know we're getting on the same page. You know, uh, I think I think he has my my uh, he has he has best, the best intentions for me. I uh, we meet, you know, we, we I say what I like, what I don't like. He tell me what's what it is. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't beat around the bush. He says, look. You know, they're looking at you as an opponent, you're this, you're that, you have to go out there, you have to start making statements, you have to train, you have to run, you have to want it the way you wanted it when you was coming up as a young guy. And uh, I think for any guy in my position, whether it be older, younger, they need to hear the truth from the person, the people around them that's handling their careers, that care about them, they need to hear the truth. He lets me hear the truth, him and my trainer, uh, terrific, Brandon Jacobs, uh, a lot of you know my friends around me, to let me hear the truth. You still have it, but you need to act like you want it. That's basically it. So what's the outlook for Kendall Holt come 2014? You obviously got one fight lined up in January. What do you want to be in 2014? 2014, I just want to be in the position I was once before. Uh, mentioned with, with the best in the world. Um, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the, the, the fight, the smart fights. Obviously, um, I still think that I'm a hot commodity. Other people may not think so, but you know, it's my job to prove them wrong. I've been proving them people wrong my entire career, and I'm not going to stop now. And finally, you got your boy over there, Glenn Tapia. What do you see with him come December 7th? I know you're calling him the son, but he's over there talking a lot of nonsense. What do you see there December 7th with James Kirkland? You know what? I love that guy. I watched him since he was an amateur, J.O. I always read about him in the newspapers. You know, uh, coming up, you know, I sparred a lot of rounds with him. You know, when I was in my slumps, he came and sat and talked to me. So I feel like that's my little brother. Man, uh, James Kirkland, our early days with Luke Duva, we, we shared training camps together. We shared laughs together. We have fun together. Uh, you know, it's going to be a war. I mean, if any, it's going to be a head-on collision. Um, James Kirkland's going to come one way. Glenn usually goes one way, but he has, he has different attributes that he can utilize as well. And I think for this fight... Um, he has to be smart, and uh, if he's smart, he's in shape, then you know he, he, he wins the fight because he has more things to bring to the fight than just going out there with that blood, guts, glory fighting style. He has that, so he is always going to be there. But I like to see him utilize all his all his attributes, all his talents in that in that fight because in that fight he's going to need them all. For the fans, you're fighting Javier Molina. Is it January 24th on ESPN? January 24th, Javier Molina, ESPN 2. I don't back down, I lay backs down. Where do you have it, former world champion? Kendall, rated R Hope.